Welcome back, everybody. Hope you are having a fantastic day. I am here with the Suburban today, and we've got a little bit of suspension upgrades to do. Uh, if you've been watching our videos a while back, we put on some H2 coils on our camper, our Suburban camper. And today, we're putting some H2 coils on the Suburban to try to beef up our suspension since we're towing so much and maintain roughly this lift when we're towing off-road. I also have a set of airbags right here that we're going to be installing. These go inside the spring and they help to stiffen up the ride, especially when towing as well. And that gives you some flexibility when you're towing or not towing. So what I have under this thing right now is the factory Z71 coil springs right there along with that red airbag is very similar to this one but that is the airlift 1000 that is it's the airbag that is made for these suburbans it's what they advertise what they're made for this is the airlift 1000 hd heavy duty up to two one two up to 2100 pounds load leveling support versus the 1000s that are in there right now or i think a thousand or 1500 pounds or something basically half this this is a stiffer airbag it should give us more strength the thing about it is this is not made for the suburban this is made for some sort of um dodge 1500 it's made for a dodge truck dodge ram ram something anyway that's what these are for but i've read that they will work and they're actually very very close to the same size as the ones on the suburban so we're going to put these inside these h2 springs and put them under the suburban so we've got a suburban we're putting hummer h2 coils on it with dodge airbags it'll be fine it's it's made for it we'll see what happens all right so the first thing we need to do is to get these airbags inside these springs. I did this before when I did that one. They're not exactly easy to get in there, but it is doable. You mostly have to squish them down and kind of roll them up so you can squeeze them in through the side and drop them down in there. I'm gonna put these springs in like this. So this is gonna be the top. And the valve needs to go out the top. There we have it, one is in. And you may be thinking, well, that's too short. Well, when the vehicle weight gets on this, this spring is gonna compress a lot. So, and that airbag is going to get wider and taller when it's inflated. So, one down, one to go. things just trying to install them all right now that those are in next step we got to lift this thing up drop the axle down disconnect the shocks the sway bar a couple other things so we can drop the axle all the way down and pop these springs out you can do this without compressing the springs or anything like that you just got to take enough stuff loose that the axle can fall all the way down naturally i'm just working with this floor jack i don't have a lift I don't have a tractor today. All I've got is a floor jack, but I think I can make it work. I don't recommend this. It's not safe. I mean, it's not unsafe, but it's not real safe. But I'll make it as safe as possible with the resources I have and get the job done.
All right, just ignore that. And I've got, this is one of the springs that was in there. This is the Airlift 1000 bag that's made for the Suburban. And it's actually shorter than this bag. This one is wider, but I think a lot of that is the use. I've had these in here for four or five years and just used them pretty regular. They've been good, but they really never were sufficient. Always wanted a heavier duty bag to give me a little bit better lift capacity. But you can see these springs, factory Z71 springs, H2 coils, they are almost exactly the same height. And this is with an inch and a half spacer. So I am hoping that I come out at the same level as before because I sat where I wanted it to sit, hoping to come out with the same level, but with a stiffer ride and a little bit more capability in my airbags to keep me level so that I can hopefully ride a little bit higher on the trail when I'm loaded down. So, time to start getting these in. Got, so gotta get the other one of these out, but I need to get the air hoses and everything hooked up to these bags and routed back out to the bumper, same spot as I had the old ones. I'm probably gonna go ahead and replace all the hoses and connections just because I have new ones. And I did have one of these that had a leak. I think it was in one of these joints, like right here or in one of my hoses, I believe is where the leak was at. It was slow, I could do a trip before it let down. I just had to air it up every 12 hours. So try to get these new ones where they don't leak. That's one of the hard parts about the airbags is keeping them from leaking, but it's usually at a joint, so. See what we can do. All right, so these have basically a, just a Schrader valve without a valve stem in it here. And this piece goes onto the top here on both of these. We need to get that snug. It's got a piece of rubber in there to help it seal up. And then this tubing will go from there over to the bumper where we'll install this Schrader valve in the bumper so that we can air it up from there. They do give you a T so you can air them both up and equalize them. I've never used one of these. I always run both of them back to the bumper so I can just air them up there. It doesn't matter either way. I'm just gonna take my hose, fold it in half, and then cut it right here in the middle. And then they've got these tiny little clamps that I absolutely hate that go on the hose to help clamp it down on that stem. These are ready to install now. Just route this up, back to the bumper, get this thing stuck in there, see where she's gonna sit.
right, so I did get the air, the uh, new airbags and the new springs on here. It's been a couple days now. So I've had a couple days to kind of drive it a little bit and get the feel of it. And I have hauled a trailer with it. It is sitting pretty much level. It's not on perfectly level ground right now, but it's sitting pretty much level almost exactly. Like I can't tell the difference visually on where it is now versus where it was with the stock springs in the inch and a half spacer. So H2 coils will give you equivalent of Z71 springs plus an inch and a half spacer. That's what I found with this. And the airbags, these airbags go up to 50 PSI. My old airbags went to 35. So that gives me a higher pressure in the airbags. It raises it about an inch. And then of course, when you load it down. So I won't run the airbags with more than five PSI in them when it's empty. But when we're pulling the camper, then um, we'll, we'll raise that PSI and help us maintain ride height and the stiff extra stiffness on it it still rides fantastic without the airbags aired up with them aired up i can tell the difference but it's not that rough so with a load on it it's gonna help stabilize it and actually make it safer to drive so i am really happy with it i'm glad not to have spacers i'm glad to have heavier duty springs and i'm glad to have heavier duty airbags so we'll probably do a trip here soon so i'll get to see how it pulls with the camper and i'll probably do that before this video gets done so i'll give you an update and let you know how it does with the camper and probably tomorrow we got some more work to do on the suburban so we're not done yet all right guys did some more work on the suburban today we actually got a new set of cooper stt pros on it same exact same as what i already had on it but i got a new set for this and now we're putting new tires on the um, or the tires off this onto the camper so we're going to rotate through the eight tires with the suburban and the camper so we can wear out all eight of the tires and not have any dry rotting sitting on the trailer so we got two spares then the four on the suburban and then two on the camper so finally for the first time ever since building this thing i actually have good tires on the camper we had the original tires from what was wrecked which were not great then we had the used tires off of this which were better than the others but they were worn out they were down to the wear bars they were worn out but we finally have good tires across the board on the suburban and the camper and we also had uh tim that did the uh is doing the wj camper if you haven't seen that go check out one of our last videos and go follow him the grand adventure on instagram he's building a camper like mine but out of a jeep wj anyway he's working for me now and I had him install some new speakers in here. Ours were completely blown. They were really bad shape, sounded horrible. So I got some new Rockford Fosgate speakers in here. And we also got a new head unit. So we've got a functioning CD player. We've got Bluetooth, USB, all that stuff. We didn't have any of that before. We spend a lot of time driving with the kids and we had the radio. And the CD player that was in there would play like the first track on a couple of CDs. That was it. That's all the entertainment we have. We don't have iPads for the kids to look at. We don't have any technology stuff. We play games. We They talk. We look out the windows. Be creative. Use their imagination. We do not have an entertainment system in this. And we spend hours in it driving around. So don't think you can't do this with kids or that you have to have a ton of entertainment for them. Kids don't have to be entertained all the time. That's not your job. Anyway, never mind. I'm rambling. I am not... You do parenting your way, I'll do parenting my way. Anyway, that is ready to go, which is great because we're gonna go on a long trip here pretty soon. We're actually gonna take the camper out of state for the first time. So we're going on a long trip. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fast. We don't have much time. We're gonna be moving quick and gonna get into some stuff. So stick around, there's lots more to come and it's getting dark and there's a storm coming in. So. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.